Well, the check engine light came on the other day. Time to plug in my $35 scanner code reader to see what kind of errors I'm getting. On my 99 Tacoma, the code reader plugs in under the dash just to the right of the steering column. So, two messages, one fault and one pending. P0136 and P0136. Okay. Back to my computer. Within Google, I typed P0136 Toyota. It says, our ECM uses the voltage levels provided by our O2 sensor to regulate our engine's fuel injector. Huh, that sounds kind of important. Then it goes on to say, the P0136 code means the O2 sensor behind our catalytic converter. So quickly, connecting the dots, it sounds to me like there's more than one O2 sensor. And my faulty one, or the one that I'm having issues with, is the sensor behind, or after, or downstream of my catalytic converter. So now I need a part. I called up Toyota and said I needed a downstream O2 sensor for my 99 Tacoma with a V6. They shared with me that it was going to be about $279 and that there were none in Canada, but there were four in Kentucky, USA. So then I turned to my old standby, Rock Auto, who I think are based in Wisconsin. They have always come through for me. Now, to be clear, they're not sponsoring me in any way. However, I have found over the years that they have good quality products, provide good service, and are reasonably priced. Within their website, you type in your year, make, and model, and then select your engine size, and then narrow in on your area of interest. For me, it was exhaust and emission, and then oxygen O2 sensor. Immediately, you are presented with a dozen or two options. Very quickly, you will see terms like upstream or downstream. Now, downstream means after your catalytic converter. Now, I had already done some research on this topic, and one of the parts that seems to be frequently recommended from other sites on the web was from a company called Denso. So, back on the Rock Auto site, I clicked on Part Number Search and entered in the part number I was looking for, followed by Denso, and then Exhaust and Emission, and finally Oxygen O2 Sensor. And I clicked on Search. And here it is. Not only does Rock Auto have the part, the part was listed for less money than from the site where I did the research. So I ordered it. While I waited for the part to come in, I thought I would remove the faulty part. All right, I'm underneath the uh, Tacoma, looking forward right now towards the engine. Right here is the transfer case. And this is what I'm after, right here. And this O2 sensor, this is fairly typical with Toyota, um, the actual bolt or stud coming out of the muffler is stainless steel. And uh, however, the nuts they put on them is just a mild steel. And so you can see there's just nothing left. It's just down to a powder. So um, yeah, I, I can literally just break this off. <laughs> so I'm going to play with that. And it looks like on the 99 model, it's just a very short little plug just right over to here. And uh, so I'll take, I'll study that. I think you just need to slip a screwdriver in here and I can pop this out. And once I have this out, I'll start to test it. So look at this. That's, that's what's left of the nut. Let's get some pliers on there. It's coming off. take my time and work it out. Uh. Uh. All right, we're making some progress here. <laughs> that's all that's left of that nut. So I'll hang on. The threads actually look good though. The stainless steel stuff does. 
I tell you, if you ever need something that says, hey, should I spend the extra money on stainless steel? Eh? Look at the difference. All right, so what's gonna take to get this one off? How many more turns? All right, this is awesome. So that's the second one off. Put it over here. And this should just come out. There it is. Mild steel versus stainless steel. So that's 23 years it's been on there. So there you go. Well, we'll replace this with a uh, stainless steel nut. Here's a close up blurry view of the sensor. You're welcome. And here's the same with the camera pointed at the Toyota plug. Well, my new part arrived, and look, it's universal, meaning no Toyota connection. So that's the old one, and the new one, and it doesn't come with the attachments. So um, I have to obviously uh, cut this one, uh, this wire here, so I can use this Toyota attachment. This can be used for a number of different vehicles. There's four wires. Uh, the good news of is is they, they, they match, mm -hmm. and I've looked them up on Toyota, and I've looked them up on this, and the blue is signal, the white is ground, and the black, uh, they're interchangeable. It's just a closed loop for heat. So it doesn't matter which way I solder the black, but the blue has to go to blue, the white has to go to white, and the black go to black. So I'm going to do that first, and uh, I'm going to stagger them. Uh, I'm going to stagger them to keep the whole area narrow, uh, and uh, so it's not too bulky, and that way I can apply uh, heat shrink over top of them to seal them. So it's just a matter of cutting these at different angles, not different angles, at different lengths, and uh, soldering them one by one, slipping the heat shrink over, applying the heat gun to it, wherever it went, it's over there, heat gun to it, and uh, this essentially, Linda, replaces the uh, like electrical tape. It's far better. It's watertight, um, and the heat gun will seal it up. So that's what I'm going to do. I have to save this piece, so I'm not going to cut it close to that. I'm going to cut it over here, and uh, this piece will be longer when I'm done. But I'll have extra to work with and so forth. And before I do that, just for the just to be super clear, I want to make sure there's nothing going on in here. So I'm going to cut the sleeve off to make sure blue goes all the way through. I, I'm sure it does. I just want to make sure. So that's what I'm doing now. So here I have removed the sleeve and you can see that I'm just doing some rough measuring to cut each wire one inch shorter than the previous. Here I'm just using a little electrical tape to hold the sleeve on the new part out of the way while I stagger the cut wires on the new part to align with my old plug. All the wires are cut and we're getting ready to solder. Slipping on the heat shrink because you can't put it on after. Yeah, I've done that wrong for some number of times. Boy, is it raining. I tell you, this little finger clamp soldering helper is really handy. I can't remember where I got it. I think I might have picked it up at Radio Shack back when we had Radio Shacks. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, that's the last one. So this completes my new Toyota part. Um, and it is longer than uh, the other one, uh, which is probably better than being shorter. Um, the other one was 11 and a half. I'm, I'm, I've got an extra four inches here, so that's fine. I'll just have to make sure that it doesn't uh, get caught up in anything or touch the exhaust or anything. That totally works. I think what I'm going to do 
is I'll keep this piece down closer to the exhaust, like that, and probably just use some electrical tape to wrap up this, to keep that nicely batched together. And that's a finished part. So here's my new hardware. I ended up not going with stainless steel. The mild steel lasted 23 years. I may as well just use some of the same. And of course, I have that in my parts bin. Now, I thought I would take a second just to see if the two units, old and new, were giving different settings on my ohms meter. Nope, not really. So for me, this wasn't a good test to see if the part was faulty. And by the way, the part was faulty. For the record, my old unit was reading about 13.6 ohms across the two black wires, and my new unit was reading 13.1. If that means anything to you, hats off to you. A couple brand new M8 nuts. And, uh, oh, that's tight. I'm going to have to thread that on. You can see that there's some... It is the correct size. This one spins on okay. So I'm going to work these down both before I... Yeah, no issues with that one. I'm going to have to put the camera down though to work on the other one. My wire is a little bit longer than I wanted, so I've just wrapped it around this one, and now I'm going to bend it back and tuck it in, and I think I have it. All right, well, that's in, and that's okay. I think we're okay. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Well, I think that's the end of this repair. So, after we complete a repair that was triggering an engine code, we have two options. We can use the scanner code reader to clear the codes, and then drive around on pins and needles for a couple of days to see if the engine light comes back on. Or, let the vehicle clear itself. Don't use the reader to do anything. Leave the engine light on and start driving your vehicle. If we fix the problem and the fault stops occurring, the engine light fault will clear itself. For me, it happened on the second day after about 10 kilometers. Now, this is much more rewarding. All of a sudden, you look down and the engine light is out. And at that moment, you realize you just fixed your Toyota. Cool. So do you want a blast from the past? Anybody else remember when Toyotas came with tools? <laughs>